movie thinks you remember the name of the goddamn island from the first movie. Or give a shit. Sandwich. Ruin your appetite, darling. We're having prawns, your favorite. I don't like prawns. Uh, now, darling, don't wander off. For God's sake, leave her alone, Deirdre. Stereotypical way over the top rich family is stereotypically way over the top. Whoa, that's Camilla Bell, star of 10,000 BC and When a Stranger Calls. Damn, I guess being cast as a young girl in a Spielberg movie doesn't guarantee a life of drugs and promiscuous sex. Only a career of middling films. Interesting. <laughs> Mother's screams about her daughter's horrifying attack are turned into a movie editing joke. The scientist, the guy, I saw you on TV. <laughs> Apparently, the unbelievable story of dinosaurs on an island was a big enough story for everyone on this train to know about it. If no one believed this shit in the first place, how did it become a huge story? Kids important to the first movie are given a token cameo in the second one, because this movie has a lot of gymnastics it needs to get out of its system that these kids can't possibly reproduce. Site B was the factory floor. That was on Ina Sauna, 80 miles from Nubla. We bred the animals there, and nurtured them for a few months and then moved them into the park. Yeah, no, you didn't or else you wouldn't have had eggs in the lab in the first movie, where we got to see them hatch and whatnot. You wouldn't have kept all that dino DNA on Isla Nublar either. Yes, the animals won't even know they're there. Very low impact, strictly observation and documentation. Seems like John Hammond has never heard of the observer effect. The carnivores are isolated in the interior of the island so the team can stay on the outer rim. Don't worry, I'm not making the same mistakes again. How so? No, you're making... You're making all new ones. Ian Malcolm would be amazing at CinemaSins. Eddie Carr, who's a field equipment expert. We have our paleontologist. Who I am not revealing the name of until it's dramatic enough to do so. And there, we girl was injured. Oh, she's fine, she's fine. Sure she is. That's what the blood-curdling scream from her mom told us. Now that I think about it, this whole scene was worthless. We saw some shitty tiny dinosaurs, the attack happened off-screen, and the parents were terrible human beings. And the girl is fine? I could have gone straight to this scene and I wouldn't have missed it. And now it's only a matter of time before this lost world. Roll credits. So you went from capitalist to naturalist in just four years. That's, that's something. Yes, it's called forced character development. Well, who's the paleontologist, by uh, the way? Who, who, you didn't say she, she came to me. I want you to know this. John plays the pronoun game, and Jesus, could you just tell him it's Julianne Moore already? You sent my girlfriend to this island alone? And it's amazing how subtly they stuck the exposition in that line. Also, how has she been gone for days and Ian hasn't worried about her until now? She doesn't even have Sega. She's such a troglodyte. <laughs> Sega wishes this joke wasn't dated as hell. You've known her for 10 years. Why did Malcolm ask Kelly to come all the way out here just so he could tell her she's staying at Karen's place? Is it so that she could become a stowaway and find herself on the island later? But anyway, you got your own stuff. You got your, your uh, gymnastics competition. Movie plants the seed for something awful later. He won't go any further up the river. He's heard too many stories about this uh, island chain. Why did he agree to go this far in the first place? A single Mertis. Both photographer and expedition planner guy seem surprised by the name of the island group that Malcolm's daughter clearly saw on board one of the RVs when she was stowing away. They call the islands a single Mertis. Also Spanish Death Island cliche. What does that mean? Really? You mean you've never been exposed to basic Spanish your entire life? Nice dinosaurs enter the picture because it's not time for the movie to be dangerous yet. Oh, give me a f***ing break. She didn't hear any of that shit the last 10 minutes? Hey, Nick! Instead of being surprised by a sudden other human, Sarah goes straight into prankster mode and scares the sudden other human. Hilarious! <laughs> Film and camera rewinds at inopportune time to create dramatic tension cliché. That's why you shoot digital when you go to Dinosaur Island, people. Hollow log convenience allows Sarah to go unkilled in the movie's first 30 minutes. They're leaving. I, I, I think they're leaving. Well, because you said so, we can save a ton of special effects budget by just believing you. We're here to observe and document, not interact. Uh, which, by the way, is a scientific impossibility, the uh, Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Malcolm feels the need to inform paleontologist Sarah Harding about the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Who started a fire? Oh, I don't know. The daughter you completely forgot about back at the warehouse for some reason because this movie needs to prove how bad fathers are? Do you see any family resemblance here? That's uh, racist. Kind of. So listen, when you're out in the field, nothing we can do can leave any more people to say that our findings uh, are contaminated. I know Spielberg loves this parallel dialogue technique, but for some reason here, it doesn't occur naturally enough and it's annoying as f well, Why not rescue me from that dinner with your parents that you never showed up for? Um, skip? I want it up and running in 30 minutes. That's half an hour. For those of you that don't speak English, I guess. Movie keeps putting in all these actors who were red hot in the mid 90s. Like that's not distracting as shit. I love this guy and his character, but damn, it's like the casting director looked at the list of characters for this movie, tried to narrow it down, and finally said, I will choose everyone! Also, God, I wish this could have been the whole movie. Kobayashi hunting down dinosaurs? No San Diego scene? Just the most dangerous game Jurassic Park style? Hey, check out this neat CGI. You see that distinctive dome skull? Nine inches of solid bone. 
careful. This guy was inserted into the movie so that he could Discovery Channel all the knowledge we need to know. No one will be seated during the Mad Max portion of the dinosaur movie. Wait, how did that work? You're saying he shot some kind of gun and it was a wire with a noose on the end and it landed perfectly on that thing's neck to be reeled in? Or was that a different gun shooting at a different animal just slash cut into this sequence to confuse me? This movie reminds me that the special edition Star Wars came out the same year, and it pisses me off just thinking about it. Zognathus Triassicus, found by Frost in Bavaria in 1913. <sighs> Does it kill anybody? Dinosaur feels exactly like I do after a 40 minute first act. Good guy characters continue to be invisible to everyone they're openly spying on. San Diego is the perfect set. People already associate our beautiful city with animal attractions. San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld, San Diego Chargers. Wah, wah. Super well-organized and well-funded dino capture endeavor has no one guarding the captured dinos, or even making sure they don't die in shit. Furthermore, this board meeting seems like an incredible time waster. I know Roland has his heart set on bagging a full-size T-Rex, but InGen currently has a baby T-Rex tied up and ready to go. Why aren't they already on the way to San Diego? Is it so that Nick and Sarah can free the animals and we can have an island free-for-all for an hour? Triceratops was just let out of its cage. So of course, the first thing it does is crack through Peter's tent with a sense of irony. Also, no one hears a rumbling Triceratops until it crashes through the tent. As if we couldn't get enough of that avoid a jeep in a tree scene from the original Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg is more than happy to give us another shot of it. How long does it take for T-Rex parents to hear their child screaming? They are fiercely territorial, according to John Hammond. And earlier we heard they wouldn't leave a baby this age alone for very long. So these T-Rexes are being very compliant with the plot right now. We're not alone on this island. Something I'm surprised you didn't realize when all your helicopters flew right past the big RVs on a cliff when you first arrived. Look, I get it. These guys are compassionate. They want to help the baby Rex. But it's batshit insane to drag an injured baby Rex around. Do you think the T-Rex parents are going to be thankful? Hell no, they're not. The amount of time it would take to properly heal this baby divided by the amount of time it would take for the parents to hunt you down and f*** you sideways is a survival quotient I'm not comfortable with. We're in a completely different situation right now. T-Rex mom finally gets mad about her baby missing at the perfect time to punch Malcolm's words into his stupid face. Nick, I need your hand here. Yeah, that phone call probably isn't in any way important. It's not like we're on an island full of dinosaurs or anything. I need another adhesive, something pliable that I can... Gum to save a T-Rex machina. Birds fly away to signal something ominous, cliche. Quick injection of antibiotics and I can get him out of here. Now you're definitely not doing anything that requires immediate attention, and you're still not answering the phone on Dino Murder Island. Help me get this thing out of here. Instead of screaming T-Rex 6 o'clock, Malcolm decides on the do what I say without question method so stubborn Sarah can waste more time. T-Rex is so pissed it went after a jeep that obviously had no living things in it, and threw it because even dinosaurs know what makes a cool shot. Okay, now throw the mother outside already. Jake's up, people. Time for your survival. Earlier when the T-Rexes walked casually into the camp, the ground was shaking under the high hide. Now that they're presumably running at full speed, no ground shaking at all. Hang on, this is gonna be bad. Malcolm speaks only in understated dramatic movie lingo when screaming is more appropriate. Also, how could he see that anything bad was about to happen? It's dark, rainy, and they're surrounded by trees. Hang on to something! Hang on to something! Unnecessary repetition of unnecessary orders. T-Rexes accomplish half their mission and then just peace out for 10 minutes before returning. She survives this just fine. Just a little scare. I will say, this scene with the trailer hanging over the cliff and the window that could break at any moment is pretty rad. There are a couple moments in Lost World that are great, and this is one of them. Ralph, what, oh, anything else? Yeah, three double cheeseburgers with everything. No onions on mine. I don't know, we'll turn it over. F*** you. All three fall when the rope goes loose, but all three also catch themselves on the ledge. Yeah, um, no. Jesus, these people are basically Cirque du Soleil professionals. Why are they even worried about dying when they're basically gymnastic superheroes? Seriously, the T-Rexes are so hell-bent on revenge that after pushing the trailer over the cliff, they walked off and then what? I heard some sounds and said, hello, that sounds like a truck trying to pull the trailer back onto the cliff and ran back to stop it. Also, meanwhile, they've left their defenseless baby out in the middle of the jungle so they can Liam Neeson this poor bastard. <laughs> Okay, honey, make a wish. Also, the T-Rexes eat the one guy who didn't really do anything to them. Somehow, the entirety of two full RVs and a connector tube falls off and down the cliff in a way that is perfectly aligned with the rope. These three vehicles were all apparently 85% gas tank. That must have been some incredible battle between the hunters and the T-Rexes, but movie is better served by not showing it, I guess. That's why they persisted in destroying the trailers. They now feel they have to defend this entire area. But this only occurred to them five minutes after they were long gone from the area, so they could kill that dude from the West Wing. What is the problem? Velociraptors. Well, just train them to be your motorcycle bros, right? Not that hard, man. Jeez. Velociraptor. Carnivore. Pack hunter. You know, from Jurassic Park. And the Rexes may continue to track us, too, if they perceive a threat to themselves or to their infant. No, no, you're wrong there, Dr. Harding. Mainly because you're a woman. I mean, because my man knowledge is better. I mean, damn it. How can I put this into terms her double X chromosomes will understand? Taking dinosaurs off this island 
is the worst idea in the long, sad history of bad ideas. Including for the movie itself, but somehow the script didn't heed that warning. Hey, Carter, I'm going to the ladies' room. So you wait for me here. Yeah, okay? Well, I see we found the guy who trained Stan Lee's janitor in The Amazing Spider-Man, and the cafe worker in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Hey, Carter! Well, it was only a matter of time before the jungle produced one of those out-of-nowhere hills people always fall down. I'm just surprised it didn't happen as Dieter was running away from the dinosaurs. As I watch this attack, I'm quickly reminded that these little bastards did this very thing to a little girl at the beginning of the movie, and she lived. Carry me. Diva. Carter. Carter. Wait a minute, you mean Carter was only like 10 feet from the rest of the group? Why did none of the other non-headphone-wearing people hear Dieter when he was yelling? Jeez, man, that guy is right there. It would have taken less time to just tap him on the shoulder. River of Blood is here to tell you that Dieter, despite fighting off the copies the first time and staying in pretty good shape, lost the will to do so once he jumped behind that log. And they worked super quickly this time. Kelly always eats her crackles in pairs, just so that when you see them sitting around, you'll say to yourself, one crackle is definitely an accident. Two crackles, well, I guess that's on purpose. Also, do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. Also, you're not on a damn backyard camping trip. You're on the run from killer dinosaurs. Who even decided to pack this shit in the first place? Going to see some dinos. Don't want to forget the s'mores. Now the movie's back to saying every single soft T-Rex step is easily felt and heard. Make up your minds! Yep, the character who earlier mentioned that the T-Rex has a great nose and might still be tracking them still has the goddamn T-Rex baby blood jacket. She's a brilliant lab scientist, but stupid as hell in the field. So Nick took Roland's gun and put spent cartridges into it. Nick apparently thinks there's absolutely no reason ever that you might need to kill one of these things and is willing to risk lives on it. Wait a minute, is the movie saying after he tried to kill the T-Rex once and found spent cartridges, he suddenly grew a conscience and decides, nah, I'll trank him instead. Or did he not bring any spare ammo? This cave is pretty damn convenient, but more interesting to me is how the f*** they just knew a cave was behind this waterfall. Hero character falls down while running away from evil cliche. Oh my god, ah, a snake! Come on, this guy's so freaked out by a snake he forgets the T-Rex. How did this asshole know they were behind the waterfall? Did he see them go in there? Did he watch the T-Rex eat the Discovery Channel dude and think, maybe my daughter and girlfriend's in there too? Here's another great moment in this overall flawed movie. We see the trails of the raptors headed toward the hunters. A great visual with great suspense. I'm knocking off another sin. No one hears the first three raptor victims get victimed. This guy is screaming at nothing until in the next shot, a raptor finally takes mercy on him and eats him so his scream wouldn't be in vain. I think it's RJ's back. Crazy that you spotted it in the tall grass, then assumed it would be important, then recognized in the dark which person you just met earlier today this bag belongs to. And all the raptors vacated the area so our heroes could get through clean. Sudden fall slide in a jungle cliche combined with a they all survived this. Double sin. Sequel takes time during this suspenseful moment to fillet the first movie. This sh actually still works after a hurricane came through it, was attacked by overgrowth, endured extreme heat, and four years of non-use. Seriously? We're still going with that lucky backpack idea? Raptor simply wants those delicious graham crackers. Mmm, mmm, good. I don't know, this kind of seems like a really stupid raptor to me. Also, raptor bypasses all the clear exits from the building to crash through the last good window, because it has OCD. The raptor, who is on the other side of the truck, apparently goes blind and simply allows Ian to run to this shack. Smart Raptor, much like the audience, is so stunned by the gymnastic turn this movie took, it is dumbfounded what to do when confronted with it. Also, I'm glad her gymnastics could play a part in the dinosaur fighting. That's not stupid in any way. <laughs> raptor in fighting allows Sarah to escape yet again, though I'm not sure what allowed her to survive that fall from the roof onto her back, but whatever. It's okay, it's over now. Okay, movie should totally have ended right there, but instead... <sighs> That's one souvenir they won't be taken with them. Because these two bullets represent the entire munition supply. They're headed in a port, but I can't raise them. So this is a decently suspenseful scene. But is the movie telling us that once the T-Rex started his rampage on the boat, no one sent out a distress signal? Somehow nobody thinks it's worthwhile to evacuate the people on the dock as a ship approaches at flank speed. Also, nobody inside this building thinks it's a good idea to leave right now. Except the Weasley nephew. This has always bothered me. The T-Rex went on a rampage and managed to eat whoever was at the ship's wheel without breaking any windows or opening any doors. Meanwhile, whoever owned this hand apparently had the best grip in the world, to the point that his hand stayed on the wheel after getting eaten whole. First off, this guy thinks this is a good idea. He seriously thinks this is a good idea. Furthermore, the T-Rex went on an eating rampage throughout the boat and yet, somehow, he went down into the cargo hold and a dead guy managed to close the doors on it. <laughs> Irony. T-Rex hangs out in San Diego. You ready for the next 15 minutes of this shit? Nobody in the neighborhood hears this. How is a chlorine pool a potable water source for dinosaurs? Who knows? Maybe just happy to see us. <sighs> Sarah's still anthropomor anthrop anth anthropomor giving human characteristics to the T-Rex. How will we find the adults? Uh, follow the screams. Cute, but San Diego is a f***ing huge city. They would actually need some kind of starting point to even find the screams. Bus accidentally foreshadows Blockbuster Video's entire corporate future. I don't know if this is racist, or if this homage just reminds me that the really stupid Godzilla with Matthew Broderick comes out the following summer, but this is just a sin in my mind. 
Steven Spielberg stages a scene where screenwriter David Kep gets eaten, probably for putting this San Diego shit in it. The T-Rex was apparently so flummoxed back at the factory, it's like a mile behind them after being on their heels just a second ago. Here's the movie switching gears yet again, trying to tell me that these T-Rex footsteps on a boat would not be heard or felt by this guy. Dinotopia. Dick movie makes a passing mention of pterodactyls, gave 15 minutes to rampage over San Diego. Also, how do you keep pterodactyls on the island? Do they use those invisible fences or a low jack? One job, one day's work, very dangerous. He does not expect all of you to live, but those of you who do will have $91 million to divide between you in any way you see fit. This suit costs more than your education. You see this watch? That watch costs more than your car. She doesn't even have Sega. She's such a troglodyte. Sega! 230 miles from Dutch Harbor on the Cornelia Marie. It's been a lot of preparation to get to where we're at now. Hardened Kevlar plates of a titanium dipped tri weave fiber. Who started a fire? We didn't start the fire. Increase your rate of climb. We must go faster. Slip, slip and slide. Slip, slip and slide. I call my agent up. Now she says, Trent, they asked for you specifically. What was, for this the, part. what was the thing? Oh, I don't know what it was. It was, uh, drugs are bad, Ginny eats something, whatever. It's after school <laughs> special bullshit. <laughs> I need to ease my mind, checking it home. Been planting them apple seeds, and while the apples grow, I'm gonna go out jacking it in San Diego.